Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the Bison Workshop. I'm Bob. And today I'm going to start working on the rear axle on this uh, big bear. And we're going to uh, turn this into rear disc brakes. Uh, this one's going to be a little different than mine was because I used a hand handlebar brake master cylinder. This one I'm going to use just a foot pedal. And I made this pedal here back when I did mine, thinking that I was going to use it, but it just seemed easier to use the handbrake on the handlebar because I had a master cylinder to go on the handlebar. Uh, this one I made, and it mounts right behind the step, and... Uh, it's got a master or a uh, slave cylinder here, and then it's got a master cylinder that comes up from the back, and I'm going to probably mount that right about here somewhere into the frame. And that way, all I got to do is take the seat off, take the cap off, and I can fill it up if I need to. This doesn't need pressure on it. Uh, this is just the reservoir that supplies fluid to the cylinder. So. This came off of a Polaris, and I just modified the uh, the brake to land in the exact same spot that the original one would have landed. So, <clears throat> so I've got this made, and uh, so now I got to run a line from here over to here, and it has to be flexible. So. I don't think we're going to use this hose. I think what we're going to use is a hose that we took off of the other big bear years ago. And we're probably going to run this from here around here. Now we don't need that spring no more, so that spring's not going to be in the way. So we'll run that from here, and then I've got a bracket that I can just screw that down to the uh, swing arm, and then this will be flexible so that when the swing arm moves, it'll move with it, so to speak. So it'll, it'll be flexible. So then I'll run this over and probably I wish that cable was a little bit shorter but it ain't so we might have to have some extra here and just relocate where the mounting thing is we got to have enough room for our speedometer cable so it's not in the way of the speedometer cable uh, we got to make sure we route this in a place where it's not going to hit the exhaust and burn your hose in two. So, we'll probably mount this wherever that lands because that's angled. This one's straight. So, this one's angled enough that it should give me enough leeway to work with. And then that will be flexible right there. All right, and then we'll come over here and make us a bracket, and I'll probably take a, and make a bracket that mounts to these two that this goes into, and then we'll make us up a, um, uh, a line to go from this to the caliper. So now... What we want to do is, I have mocked everything up here, so originally it had a backing plate on it, and then this plate, which goes on, so what I done was took this part out of the backing plate, I just cut all the backing plate off of it, because it was messed up anyway, this come off of another big bear, one of them rear ends that he sent to me, the guy I got it from, and, uh, We'll put that on there, but this is too thick. So 
what we're going to have to do is make us another one of these and we're going to have to make another plate because this plate's not going to work once I make this plate only the thickness of this area right here so we're probably going to use this quarter inch thick aluminum to put on there and then I'll just make me a plate actually all I have to do is just take that and uh, cut that round part off and I've got my plate right there so basically that'll go on there like that and then this will go on there like that but we need a way to mount our caliper so I took the caliper off of the front of that Polaris out in front of the shop and I think we're going to use this because the mounting bolts are on the uh, master or the uh, caliper so what we need to do is make and I've already drawn it here uh, we got that so now we need to just cut that straight down through here all the way and um, And then we need to measure how far from here to here that we need to go. And then we'll just have to concave it to allow for this part of the cal caliper to go in. And um, then this will mount on there. Let's just pretend that it's on there. This will mount on there. And then we'll have a spot where we're going to have our holes drilled. For these two bolts to go into to hold that to the caliper so let's just pretend that this year's already made then we'll take our see I was originally going to do this but I didn't have no way to mount my caliper so I'm gonna to have to make this piece but make it thinner all right and then we'll get this put on there in the place that it's supposed to be in then we're going to make the caliper so that it mounts right here so we're going to have an ear that comes off of this bracket that I'm going to make out of that piece of aluminum that we can bolt this caliper to. So once I get that made, I can just put my caliper up there where I want it and then take a, a transfer punch and transfer where the holes are going to be so I can drill it out and then I should be able to mount this caliper to it. Um, so uh, it's going to be a long drag out process so once I've got the caliper and the rotor on it then I can take this and put it on there this is not the one I'm going to use this is the one I'm going to use here because it's it's kind of the same size as this side here I haven't cleaned it up yet but that will go on there like that and the reason that we want to make another reason why we need to make this thinner is so that the caliper, or I mean the rotor, can go back in there further, so to speak. That way we have enough room for the original rear uh, hub, or spindle, or whatever you want to call it. And there we got our rotor system. Basically what I did was took a rotor... I went and bought a new rotor, or a used one, off of eBay, and I just cut all this off of it because it looked like that. And I just cut all this off of it, took it over to the lathe, and laid the rest of it to where it came down to meet these standoffs where the threads go in that holds the rotor. So. 
that way we didn't have all that this stuff here sticking out so now we'll put that on there we'll put that on there then we'll put this on there and we'll have to get us another washer because we want this nut to be out further so that we can use our out or our uh, cotter pin to hold that in place so it'll be spaced out just a little bit so we may put a spacer uh, we'll probably put the spacer back here against this so I have a spacer let me find that and so we've got this spacer right here and it'll go on there just like that and back up against that bearing sleeve inner sleeve then we'll put our rotor on then we'll put our spindle or a hub on now that's out far enough that the cotter pin will land right where it's supposed to so I think this will work just fine then all I got to do is get the uh, caliper mounted see originally on mine I welded two brackets because I used a different caliper for mine I used this style caliper on mine and it mounted right there and then I welded some ears to here to come up but we're not going to do any welding on this one we're just going to make a plate that will mount this caliper instead so this one's got pretty decent brakes brake shoes or pads on it so we don't have to buy no pads and I got an extra set that came off of the other uh, Polaris and uh, so we got extra pads so the next thing I need to do is make this out of this so I'm going to take it and probably mill this hole out I'll drill it out and then mill it till it's the same size as this one then we'll drill these two four holes out we'll probably drill these holes out first and use these holes to mount it down to a piece of wood so I can put it in the lathe or in the mill and then we'll do the center hole so um, then we'll just cut this off well we're going to cut that off first I got to draw my line straight on out cut that off and then we'll modify all this area right here to accommodate for that caliper like so so I'm gonna get that done and uh, we'll be back
All right, guys. So we've got all this set up. I got to paint that rod, but we got the brake switch working, and it's not in the way of the fill plug. And this all come off of a Polaris, and I just made this bracket to go on here with spacers to space this out so we can utilize the uh, protector and um, then we ran the hose around and it's flexible so when the swing arm swings it'll move with it I ran it down through here tied it to that ran it through those rings and then I made this bracket right here to house the uh, brake line with the clip so now we get to uh, put it all together so the first part is this right here I made this and this is what's going to hold the caliper so it'll go on then I made this piece that will go over top of just the outer edge of the bearing that holds the bearing in so we'll put that in and I changed the bolts to uh, Allen cap heads so we'll put all this together Yeah, I cut my finger, guys, on my bandsaw of all places. I've never cut myself with my bandsaw until yesterday. And this one's going to actually be nicer than the brake job that I did on my other one. My, or on mine. Because <clears throat> I used a different caliber on mine. I wish I'd have had one like that. I'd have done the same thing to mine. And may still yet, I have another caliper come off the front of that Polaris. All right, then we have a ring that goes up against the center part of the bearing. Then we have my modified rotor that I took off of the front of a big bear and just cut all this off down to where it'll slide on because the front and the rear have the same splines. And there's plenty of space. There's probably about... Uh, quarter inch space between the head of the bolt and the rotor so then we stick this on then we stick our washer on and then we tighten that up get my air And then we want to put it where the holes are. All right, now we got our hole lined up. I'll put the carter key in later. All right, so then I went and cleaned up the caliper, and it's got pretty decent brakes on it. So that will mount 
right there. And we'll screw that on. Get it started. Before we tighten the rotor or caliper. Then we'll put our bolts in. And I always have a hard time hitting the hole. There we go. So then we'll tighten those down. <clears throat> I think I put my jack stand in the wrong damn place. All right, so now we got that. So now we'll tighten up the brake line. to uh, use a pair of channel locks to hold that. Alright, so now everything's good. I just put that uh, coating on, uh, wire coating loom to just make it look better, make it match the rest of it. So, now we've got the, uh, I gotta tighten that bolt, bolt up a little more because I ain't got it right where the hole is. Alright, so then we'll put our carter pin in. We will bend that around. Snip that off. And then snip the bottom one. And it's done. All I got to do is put oil or uh, rear end grease in it. And the rear end is done. So uh, the only thing left to do is to bleed them. And I'm not going to do that on video. Uh, it's pretty simple. We just uh, fill up the reservoir. But I'm not going to do that yet because this is coming out. So I'm going to have to take and uh, uh, take all this out. Because what we're going to do is I'm not going to use this frame. Uh, I'm going to take everything off of this frame. And we're going to put it on that frame right there. Uh because I have already redone this frame. I have re-threaded all these to matching bolts. I've got all the bolts in it where they're supposed to be. Of course, I gotta clean some of them up and repaint them. But uh, I've got all the bolts ready, steering columns in it. I'm gonna use that motor. And we're gonna test that motor is what we're doing. I've never heard this motor run, so I've done a lot of work to that motor. I've readjusted the valves. Uh, 
brand new spark plug uh new stator new oil filter new oil and it's set for two years without anything so uh we're going to use this motor and if it's bad then we know we have a good motor right there so this is the frame we're going to use basically i'm just going to start transferring everything uh, i have to rebuild the whole front end because the ball joints are about ready to fall out of their sockets um, so the tie rods are no good so i had to get tie rods and ball joints and bearings for it and calipers because the calipers are locked up uh, so we're putting we're gonna have to rebuild the whole front end so that's my conversion for the uh, rear brakes i can't stand drum brakes now there's one other issue that i've seen with this and this is probably the biggest sin that anybody could ever do this is the one thing that i'm down on co-heartedly um, this year irks me to no end when people do this and i'll show you what i'm talking about this switch right here is not the switch for this bike this switch is for some other bike because the big bear 400 had a choke lever here there's no place to mount a choke lever or nothing so somebody has taken this off well they took the wrong one and put on there and instead of plugging it in like it was supposed to because they used the wrong one they just wired w wires together you got green to green yellow to yellow blue to blue black to black brown to brown and red to blue and these two were not hooked up this here has a separate plug a two prong or two pin plug and then this one's got a one two three four five six prong plug this drives me nuts this is the quickest way to piss me the hell off because there's no sense in this if you can't i mean this this switch was twelve dollars if you can't afford twelve dollars don't do it take it to somebody that knows how what they're doing you don't do stuff like that that's how wiring harnesses get caught on fire because you wire the wrong stuff to the wrong thing so yeah that pisses me off that is the one thing that pisses me off more than anything you could you could trash that motor you could tear up the rear end everything but that right there is the one thing it's to me is an unforgivable sin uh if you're going to molest a wiring harness you molest it correctly so that it doesn't mess up the wiring harness you want to be able to plug this stuff in and you want all your stuff to work correctly you don't want to be wiring blue to red well blue usually is a hot leading to something else so you know who knows what that's going to so i don't trust it uh, yes he did have a neutral safety light on when he uh turned it on uh but that had nothing to do with the neutral safety light it's got to do with something else they also had the fan for the uh, radiator hooked up to the headlight switch the wires they cut the plug off of the headlight that i had to replace i just took it off of the other wiring harness i had here extra and now i can plug my headlights in this one here was on there but they had all the wires frayed i had to cut it and put heat shrink all the way all the way down it to protect it and this 
was hooked to the fan. So, I wonder why the fan wasn't working. It's because it was hooked to the headlight. All I had to do is turn the headlight switch on and the fan comes on. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I, that's, that to me is the most unforgivable thing you can do to a big bear or any four wheeler for that matter is molest that wiring harness to the point where it drives the next person insane. Uh, that's just pure ignorance. But anyway, enough rambling. Uh, I've got the correct uh, carburetor on it now. Now we're probably gonna have some issues when we go to run it, start it, because I'm gonna have to do a bunch of adjustments. Like I said, here is my um, uh, reservoir for the, uh, bas basically the master cylinder. Uh, but I'm not gonna mount it to this frame. This one here, I've already mounted a hole right there because I've had that mounted to this one. So that's where I'm gonna mount it right there. So when you lift the seat off, you can get to it and fill the brake fluid. But there you have it. Uh, so now I'm at the point where now I can start taking everything off of it. We're not even gonna use the exhaust that's on this. We're not gonna use the motor. We're gonna use that motor. And I've got one muffler up there that has already been painted with heat paint. I got two of them back. Uh, so it's already prepared and ready to go on. That one has both of its studs, so I ain't gotta worry about uh, changing or fixing the head on that one. This one's already been fixed. Well, there actually wasn't nothing wrong with it. So, that's another reason why I'm gonna use that motor. Plus, that's a four-wheel drive motor, and if one day down the road we get a big bear that's got the front end, the front four-wheel drive, then it can easily be changed back to a four-wheel drive. And that is my goal, one day to have a four-wheel drive big bear. So, anyway, there's the brake system. This video is probably pretty long by now. Uh, so, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. You guys have a good one. Later.